Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are going to be painting these beautiful cardinals today. And I have three different variations here. I'm going to be painting this variation today, um, but you don't need a wood slice to paint this. You can just use a regular piece of paper and make this a Christmas card or a greeting card or a card for winter. But I'm just painting these on wood slices because I'm painting them for somebody and I'm just kind of hitting two birds with one stone. So um, let's pretend that this is a watercolor piece of paper, which it can be. And as you can see, I have very lightly drawn out a cardinal for myself. So um, I'm going to show you. I don't have a piece of paper here and I'm too lazy to go get one. So I'm just going to draw it on my uh, piece of paper, my paper towel. Um, for the cardinal, I'm going to do kind of like a, a very wide U. And then I'm going to attach the tail like this. And then I'm going to connect the wing and then the the head's going to go like somehow like this and that's all you need to sketch out for yourself with a with a pencil because the rest all of the other details we will fill in with um a very fine detailed brush so i'm going to start out with the female cardinal so here i'm taking a watered down brown or any sort of tan color it doesn't have to be precise a lot of people still to this day ask on my videos to please include the exact color names and I will continue not doing that for the foreseeable future because it doesn't matter like I truly don't think you need the exact color name to achieve a beautiful painting like you can use your version of green and make it extremely unique and gorgeous so use brown or tan or a sand color whatever you've got laying around now what I could have done here and I, I guess I still could do it is add the tip of the wing if you would like <clears throat> or you could leave it out how it was before because you can see that all of my other cardinals, I just left it flat. So we're going to be doing another layer on these, so you don't have to worry too much. But I am just going to attach the head here. Now for this part, I'm going to go in even closer for the head. Because what I'm going to do is leave a little triangle indent. Um, so I'm going to go up a bit and then I'm going to paint an inverse triangle like this. And then I'm going to just do the rest of the head. And so for the top of the head, so these are the details that I was talking about earlier. I'm just switching to um, a size double zero. You can use quadruple zero. The paintbrushes I use are linked in the description. <clears throat> but... Um, I'm kind of flicking out to create that little mohawk that cardinals have. Like so, and as you can see, oh, I hope that was on the camera. I've, I've left this little triangle and I will show you why later on. Right now it's not really relevant. So anyway, so that is, it's as simple as that. That's our female cardinal. We're not obviously not done it yet, but that is the first layer. While that is completely drying, I am going to move on to, actually, sorry, no, before it dries, I'm going to take a slightly darker brown, or you can mix a little bit of uh, even red into it, because female cardinals do have like a tinge of red on their bodies, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, this didn't work out how I wanted it to because it sort of started to bleed. So it does have to be kind of dry so it doesn't bleed. But 
Um, I'm just adding a darker color mixed with a little bit of red or maroon onto the wing to distinguish it from the rest of the body. Now, let's move on to the male cardinal. So this guy, we're doing exactly the same thing, basically. I don't like this red. Use the brightest red that you have. You can certainly use thinner brushes to assist you. Like, I'm kind of using my size 8 right now, but I am going to switch to my double zero. And I'm also going to create a wing on this guy because I kind of overdid it with the body. So same thing, I'm doing that little triangular indent. before giving him his little mohawk. Now, if you, the reason we're leaving this indent is because later we're going to be painting on the beak and the beak is kind of an orange color. So if you have um, watercolor paints that aren't super opaque, then you'll have a hard time getting that orange to stand out. I am using, not right now, because, but I primarily have been using in all of my previous videos the um, Grabby paints, which the link is in the description if you want your own, and I love them. They are so, so opaque. The reason why I'm not using them for the wood slice ornament, uh, sorry, for this video is because I'm painting wood slice ornaments and, um, Honestly, I have a newborn, so this was the first palette that I saw. That is the honest answer. It was the palette, paint palette that was most accessible. It's the one that I've been using for three years on my channel before I switched to the Grabby paints like half a year ago. Um, I love those paints. I really, really do. So yes, I took a little bit of maroon mixed with black or red with black, just anything so that the wing is t a tad bit darker than the rest of the body. Although that was not very smart of me to do because I forgot that I have to go over them anyway with a second layer to make them a little bit brighter, um, which I'm gonna do right now, which is too bad because that wing looks really nice. Sometimes my wings don't always turn out. Um, I have to work quickly here for a couple of reasons. Number one, my filming device is about to lose its battery charge. It's at like 8%, um, which I haven't actually turn this thing on because I just really quickly charged it just to film this tutorial because I haven't filmed since August and I'm pretty sure you're going to be seeing this tutorial in January. Um, that is because I had pre-painted a bunch of paintings so that when my baby was born I didn't have to worry about painting. Um, so anyways, when I turned on this camera, I, I totally forgot about these pictures, but uh, I gave birth at home to a healthy baby girl and we, uh, back in September, and we um, used this phone to take pictures like right after the birth and I completely forgot about them and I looked at the pictures and I was like, oh, raw times, raw times. But uh, yeah, so this is my first tutorial 
well also probably of the new year but I might jumble up my tutorials so this might actually not even be released in January but we'll see um <clears throat> what was I gonna say yeah it's my first time filming since August and so uh oh right the other reason I have to um hurry up other than the battery on my camera is because my daughter is going to start crying at any moment and she's going to need to feed. Luckily it's the weekend and my husband is just chilling in bed with her at the moment, but he does not have the anatomy to feed her. <laughs> so there's only so much he can, actually he is way better at calming her down than I am. Like he read all the books before she was born. I read zero books and he is amazing at calming her down. I don't know how I would have done this without him. He is, by the way, the most involved father in the world. I'm very, very, very lucky. I'm very lucky for having him, but I'm also very lucky for having such an easy daughter because she is incredibly easy, like truly such an easy baby. Um, I don't know what we did to deserve this, but she slept in three hour chunks right from the beginning. Um, my best friend gave birth, uh, six months before me, four months, five in March. And I gave birth in September and she, I remember her telling me like when I was still pregnant, um, she had to get up every single hour for her child. And I am so happy that I don't. That my daughter has slept <clears throat> in three hour chunks since the beginning. She has even given us six hour chunks some nights. And that is always so nice when you wake up and you look at the clock and you realize you've actually gotten like five hours of sleep in a row. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Actually, last night we had the time change. Because once again, I'm pre-filming. And... Uh, yeah, so the time just automatically changed on my phone at night. So I looked at the phone and I saw 2.30 and I was just thinking, my God, this kid hasn't even slept three hours. Like this is the least amount of time that she has slept uh, at night. And then I forgot that the time had changed. So, so she had slept three and a half hours. Um, okay, sorry, I kind of got off track there. I am now painting the beautiful tree branches that these little guys are sitting on. Um, I am using my size double zero by Winsor Newton for the details of these branches. And I personally think that these branches are what makes this painting what it is because they are very delicate and they add a level of detail to this painting that is unmatched by anything else you could add to it. I'm honestly just saying random things right now, as I often do. Somebody commented on an older video saying, um, I was painting pine trees and instead of saying pine needles, I said pines because I don't I don't think when I paint, I don't think about the words coming out of my mouth. So often I say um, I use the wrong word for something. 
So my head's just not there, right? I'm focused on painting. And the, and the person commented, oh, by the way, they're called pine needles. <laughs> Which I, I appreciate. I'm sure this person was, was genuinely trying to be helpful. And typically I learn a lot from you guys. Like you give me some pretty helpful tips and terminology on things that I completely butcher or words that I butcher. But um, I just thought that was so funny. Yes, I know that they're called pine needles. You would certainly hope that someone who lives in a forest filled with pine trees would know that they are pine needles. But I really hope you're seeing what I'm painting here because I keep going off the camera off the screen. So you can have these uh, branches coming out of many different directions and have the little twigs kind of coming out everywhere. It's, it's completely up to you and how you want to paint your painting, obviously. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. That's good enough for me. And uh, the thing is, I wish I had used a little bit more black in these branches because they're too brown for me. I like when they're a little bit darker and they, because then they look more dramatic. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to just leave it before I mess something up. So we're just going to finish off our little guys here. Um, so what we're going to do is paint the black portion around the beak area. So. I'm going to zoom in again so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to start on the female. The female, I like to make them a little bit smaller. So I'll outline that triangular portion that we did. And then the top will be a little bit thicker. And you'll have this little um, bump that kind of goes out a little bit. Because that's where we're going to be painting our eye. Um, and then you can kind of match it up. I like to make it a little bit bigger on the male, whether that's anatomically correct or not, I have no idea. This actually is not that much bigger on this particular one, but what, what can you do? I'm going to just... Uh, let this while I'm letting this dry because I just realized on the completed ones that I already have I completely forgot to paint the eyes on them so once that black part dries you're gonna take white and you can use acrylic paint if your white watercolor isn't very opaque uh, mine in the in the grabby set that I have the watercolor set uh, the white is extremely opaque, so I have no problem adding very light details on dark backgrounds. But here I'm just adding a tiny dot in that little divot, uh, not divot, the little kind of outcrop <laughs> of the black part. So I'll just do all of mine since I'm waiting for the other one to dry before we add the other details. There we go, and one more. I would say this one's my favorite, where they're kind of facing one another, but they're separated. Okay, so back to this guy. Oh, that dried actually pretty quickly, so I'll just add the eyes 
right away there and there and the second last detail is the beak so i'm picking up orange watercolor here and we are gonna fill in this triangular portion and also have a little triangle coming out so it kind of looks like a wonky parallelogram Did I mention that we're using orange for this? If you don't have orange, you can use like a, a watered down red or maybe add yellow to your red, but I'd be surprised if you had yellow and red, but no orange. So I don't think you'll have that issue, but there we go. Fabulous. Ooh, the other thing I almost forgot, my goodness, are the legs. Guys have to stand on something. So I just have them uh, kind of on the back portion of that belly. I have two little lines attaching to a branch like that. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back out because the final detail, which brings this entire thing together is uh the sorry are the the very pretty berries that are on these branches that we've painted i'm gonna just cover up my female cardinal so that the red doesn't get on her but here I am taking a paintbrush, I'm soaking it in very watered down red, and then I'm tapping it against another brush where I want the red berries to splatter. Now you can apply these manually, and that's what I did for a very long time, because I've painted these before. And you know, it, it looks very nice that way as well. Um, however, I think it looks a lot more natural if you do it the splatter way. And you can always go back in, because I have a lot of these tiny splatters, so you can go back in and add larger berries to contrast the smaller ones attached to all the little twigs you've painted. You can also use this to cover up issues or um, kind of splatter mistakes if there are any. And uh, once you've got that down, you are basically done. Those are our cardinals. So that's a pretty quick and easy um, cardinal tutorial, again, you don't need a wood slice, a watercolor piece of paper will be fine. This would make a very beautiful Christmas card or greeting for the winter. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I might even release this for Christmas 2023 because I'm painting this in November. We'll see. You'll either see it in December, November, or January. Thanks for watching.